maximizing BNB revenue and worst guest stories. So you should know that when we started the idea of season four of the podcast, the guy says, Hey, we don't want to do it all about real estate. And in this episode, Brody grounds us. Uh, he brings us back. I think he even says the, the comment, stop talking real estate. So he brings us back to reality. And then we will get to learn that Jamie had aspirations to become a doctor, which leads us to a conversation of college versus no college. And, and then we dive into real estate and what's up with the bookings for August and September for our BNB property. So if you want to chat about anything we've discussed here, I'm giving you my cell phone number at the end. So be sure to stick around. This is episode number 171 of the W2 Capitalist podcast. So there's been a ton of people like here, um, complaining about not having anything for September. I've heard that too. Like it, mm. It's just kind of, kind of a lot of people's stuff has just been going dead. Well, I mean, the uh, school starting, some... right? And stuff. Mm. Yeah. There was a lot of, a lot of folks complaining about August and September, but then they noticed October and November is picking up. I actually, um, had a consulting call lady reached out to me and said, Hey, would you mind telling us? Cause we don't, we've had this property in March. It's done great through the summer, but we don't have anything for August or September. I'm like, yeah, let's look at it. I, it I, was I weird because before <laughs> art looked great. It's just timing, I think. I don't know. Ours started slowing down too, and it was a little worrisome because we had such a great July. And but we started getting like a lot of like just like last minute, like you know, mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. before or a couple of days before, you know, for whatever reason. And, and like it's just kind of consistently done that. So we don't have a lot coming up in September, but. At the end of August, it, we've just been filling up with just people, I guess, just doing a staycation or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. What's been the uh, weirdest guest story you've had, like why they were coming into town? Uh, uh, why they were coming into town or just a Don't's... weird story in general? Well, like, I can, wanna, I, can I, I share you mine first? My question. I, I want to ask you that because you're living with them. Like, what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you? Oh, me? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. That... <laughs> That so I've had some. I mean, like I said, I've, I've had nobody that's been super weird though with us. Like it's all been fairly it's relative, well, pretty cool. <laughs> you know, I've had some of those like some loud, loud yeah. people, loud couples <laughs> stay with us. I'm like, wow, our walls are really thin. You know, like I've had that happen. Um, you guys mind teaching me a thing or two? No, I'm just yeah. I'm like what? Why do they? What do they eat? You know. Um, <laughs> But uh, there was this one, and uh, so like my story, the one that I think is like I I walked in, um, met this family, because they're like, hey, the shower curtain fell down. I was like, I'll come get that right away. Like we're like right around the corner, so we want to be like super duper hosts. And like, so I was like, all right, I'm at Home Depot, got some sticky stuff, got it fixed. Walked in, there, I'm like, y'all are super sharply dressed. Like y'all headed to a wedding, like. And um, they all look sort of Amish too. I don't know why I thought that when I walked in, um, but they were like, "No, we're going to a funeral." And I was like, mm. "Oh shit! I am really sorry. I'll be in and out. Uh, I'm super sorry for your loss. Uh, there's a donut store around the corner." I was like trying to like make a smile. I don't know. I was just like backing out, just like vomiting words. What does a donut store have? I don't know. I was <laughs> donuts make people panicking. Happy, you know? Yeah, I was like, "What do you I mean they do?" Here? Like but trying is to it... banter. <laughs> and they were like, we're here for a funeral. Like my like uncle or dad, it was something terrible just died. And I was like, hi. Uh, uh. Mm. I, I don't know how to end those conversations other than I'm sorry for your loss. You know, and it's just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to the area. Um, I hope you enjoy your stay. <laughs> like there's your shower curtain. Bye. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> When you get done with that cemetery, you might want to check the one out on 12th Avenue. It's got yeah. some really great headstones. <laughs> it's super awkward. Yeah. Like, uh, let me think. What do I know about funerals? Well, this is a, there's a great Civil War funeral. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You guys making it to D.C.? There's a couple of monuments. Um, our, our, we had a similar story. Uh, we're in a I don't, they just offered this up. Like, we don't really ever ask, like, why are you coming to town or anything like that? But this this uh, older couple uh, who booked it, they just offered up this information. They're like, hey, we're bringing our daughter and our granddaughter. Uh, her husband just died, and this is our way of getting away and trying to get her mind off of things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. 
okay, don't bring any of those spirits with you. Ooh, yeah. If you do, take them back. Like, yeah. And I don't know if that's where the cocaine came from or, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Holy don't crap. Know. That's wild. Yeah, I've, uh, mm-hmm. The only other disaster story I had was like, we had a bunch of people come down from New York for the hurricane. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, my apartment's under like six feet of water. I'm like, oh, well, welcome. <laughs> We're not We're in the zone here. Yeah. <laughs> Did you jack up the price? No, no. I don't price gouge like that. But Of course. I will admit, like, the people who ambulance chase for stuff, I mean, it's a good way to make money. I'm not gonna lie. I can't sit there and deny it. <laughs> <laughs> we we will like there's one strategy um we learned about or learned from Eva and the mastermind. So in the summertime we we book seven days on, right? So it's a minimum of seven day stay. But somebody could book on a Tuesday, right? And so they leave the next Tuesday and then the next person coming in may not come till Friday. So we've got that three or four day window. So what we'll do, it's going to sit empty anyway, because it, that's where our policy works. Right. So we'll, we'll jack it up 50, hundred bucks a night. And, um, for those people who like last minute plan, Oh, they, and that's worked out well a couple of different times. Yeah. So, I can see so that working. Do, so do yeah. you, you manually adjust your pricing? Well, I don't Cassie does Cassie, Cassie's uh, she's the Airbnb super host. And do y'all like keep track of like events going on and the special events going on? In the area? No, a matter of fact, we've been real horrible about that. Um, we're getting better, but like, you know, our July 4th weekend was the same price as any other weekend. Mm. We just, just forgot about it, you know, and, and Memorial day. I don't, I'm, I think we did something for labor day. Um, it, you know, but we, we just kind of forgot about it and still you know got four fifty five hundred bucks a night wow so we're so you're not using any kind of like price slabs or anything no uh -uh. brody are you guys all manual yeah yeah caitlin's with all that uh stuff and making sure it's price adjusted accordingly but like we don't like jack up the prices for events or like we'll do it for the long weekends but um we usually try to have like events like on standby for like, you know, like, Oh, what are you coming to town for vacation? I'll like check out these five things that are going on in the area. You can get tickets. Um, and people usually appreciate that. So that's the only reason we track that stuff though, because we kind of want to go to it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so. you don't have kids. You can go do stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. I joke. I joke. What, what, how, how far in advance do you let folks, book i don't know that to be honest I don't know that. I jeff don't know what that. about you year out do you? year i got i've got stuff in memory got bookings in april and may and uh i think that's the farthest one out is may so six eight months from now jamie what about you man i was planning on doing a year um and talking to in my area I, i'm thinking i'm going to do one night stays as well which I know is kind of uncommon. One, one night stays. Yeah, I'm gonna allow it. I'm gonna try it out. I will allow it. Yeah, yeah. I've heard. I've heard a lot of people say don't do that, but you know, Why we're not? gonna see What's, what happens. Uh... It's a lot of turnover. It's a lot of you know potential uh... parties. Yeah, you think so? One night. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Without fail. We we had a we had a lady message us uh, two days ago. And she said, hey, uh, we notice in the summertime you require that seven days. We just want to come in for a weekend because we want to have a party and celebrate my son's graduation. And we're like, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Honestly, no parties. Well, yeah. I feel like that's kind of where the smart technology that I've added to the house comes into play, though. Like, I've got the doorbell camera and, and a camera on the back porch, like looking in the backyard. So I feel like somebody tries to throw a one-night party and shut that down pretty quick did you did you put the camera in the bathroom like you were talking about <laughs> <laughs> no not the bathroom but i made sure both bedrooms had it yeah ah kidding spicy we only do, joking uh, disclaimer we, we do three days a because of the party thing and b like so that people don't just swallow up our weekends and then he got an open week 
you know, because most people are like, you know, if they're going to stay there a week, it's typically, you know, mm. weekend to weekend. But if, if you have, if you have somebody who just swallows up all your, your weekends, then you got no chance of like, you know, getting that middle. Well, not no chance, but less of a chance. Zero to, chance, to Jamie. You book. See, I've heard both night. arguments. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard both arguments. I don't know. I, it'll probably be a little test and see. Um, Dude, I would say run it at one YOLO. And then once you have your first yeah. party, you're going to shut that shit down. You'd be like, never again. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we did. <laughs> That's hilarious. And all the turnovers, too. Just the turnovers were insane. Yeah, yeah, I feel that's like the other that's managed. the other part too. Is like you know we've got both of our listings are big houses and it, you know it it's not cheap and it's you know it's not easy to just have the guy come in every other day. Yeah, you know. But the guest is paying for that, right? Yeah, should be. Well, well, mostly, but um, we're getting kinda, a lot more miles on the car too that way. Uh, we kind of like don't we don't charge exactly what our housekeeper charges us because again it's it's a big house and we don't want some people are snobby about how much they'll pay for cleaning mm. so you know we try to keep it around you know 250 or three but the housekeeper charges 375 yeah that's about what ours charges us and it's a pass-through it's three 350 375 if it's around your nightly rate, I mean, I don't think it should set off any alarms in people's heads. Yeah. You know? Well, again, think... like, you know, and we could change it as we go along. Uh, we're still well, kind of tweaking everything. But, we, you know, in the beginning, we we wanted to get some reviews and, you know, get our five stars so we could get the super host. And so we just kind of take a little bit of a hit on stuff like that. Gotcha. But I mean, when we first started our first one, we, you know, we were thinking like 200 a night, or at least that's what Trina was thinking. I was thinking 250 a night and, you know, now we're getting 275 and sometimes 315. And so. It was doing better than you thought. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool house. But the second one, like, it's kind of off to a slow start. But again, it could be the September thing. So, you know, we're trying to, now that we're done with this house, we're trying to refi it. And the bank we're working with, they're like, you got to show us some bookings. So we, <laughs> we, we, we dropped the price so that we could get some action. And, um, you know, we somebody booked for October, but... Like we need September, September stuff so we can be like, here's its potential, you know. Mm -hmm. so. If you want, uh, uh, I can connect you with a guy. They don't, they don't actually look at that. They, uh, I don't know, unless you're trying to get traditional with a super great rate, but it's a DSCR type product, and they use. He said they've got tools at their disposal, something like Air DNA or of the like where they look at projections and occupancy and they just go off of that. So that, cause they're used to working with new, um, uh, short-term rental folks host. So if you want, if you want his contact, I'll, I'll be able to. Yeah. Shoot me a text with it. Uh, we've got this new, uh, lender we're working with and they've been really good. Um, giving us a good interest rate, especially in these times and, um, uh, you know, good LTV and, what are you what are you hoping to get on your refinance right now so it's late august when we're recording this 2022 what do you like what do i like how big of a loan or no what's interest what percentage, rates or yeah interest what, rate i mean we just got done doing two of them with them and it was four percent oh wow good for you that's incredible it blows my mind yeah, and I, I mean, you know, that's all Trina does is call banks all day. So yeah, I mean, she just luck of the draw. There's a lot of other things no, I think she does. No <laughs> luck of the draw, man. That's hard work paying off. Mm -hmm. awesome. So I did a, I just refinanced mine, the DSCR loan, and it was just over seven percent. Yeah, it's DSCR it hurts, rates are, but are high. Yeah, yeah, but it, I mean projected to, to work out 
So, did you have a hard money loan on that one before? I did. So that was probably what 10, 12? 12. So you and, you and I was approaching the... I was approaching the uh, the penalty zone for extending that. So <laughs> what does that look like? <laughs> I think it was three points. Okay. Next. Yeah. Ooh. Well, can I uh, can I interrupt really quick? Yeah. Yes. So our goal for these were not to talk too much real estate. So can we switch topics? <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Love you guys. Sorry, we got to stay on track though. <laughs> and not talk about real estate this whole time. What what's your favorite Xbox game that you play with your tenants or your oh. guests? Oh. <laughs> uh shoot, man. I used to tear up Call of Duty. Oh yeah. I think everybody did at one point or like Halo. Good old days. Yeah. <clears throat> Good old days. Halo Rockets. What was that? Prisoner Rockets? You ever play that? The old school Xbox? Like Xbox. The Quake one? one? No, it was it was the original Halo where you could do the multiplayer. We would like string Xboxes together. Oh, you oh, play oh, rockets oh, and, in that little tiny you, dungeon room. And you launch yep. each other around, yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, it's like you would respawn and jump and like have to find <laughs> and shoot. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah. That's a good time. Yeah. We did that in college once. We had like a, you know, like, so we're, we're like, you know, that's Halo 1. So we were playing, you know, Halo 3 at the time when I was in college. So like, you know, six, seven years later. But some guy shows up with a hard drive with a Halo 1 on and he's like, guys, I could just, I've jailbroken this. We could put it on our laptops and we could just Ethernet cord all of our laptops together and play. And uh, it went from like four people playing. Like, you know, we were in like this little study room, like really quietly, like tapping away. Like, what do you guys? And there's like two people would come in and start studying and they're like, what are you doing? They're like, played Halo. And then like two more people would join. And soon we had like 16 people and like eight people behind, you know, like somebody behind everybody watching, like, hey, could I jump in? <laughs> it's like the whole barracks was there. That's nice. Uh, yeah, it was good times. Jamie, what what is on the shelf behind you? What is the on the shelf? Which he one? That award. Which we got, awards? We've got a Gator uh, football signed by a guy that didn't last very long there, old Jim uh, McElwain, but got my name on it, so I kept it. Got two President Councils awards from my old uh, my old company, and then this is uh, probably my favorite. It's the competitive product champion of the world um, <laughs> for like a little. A little fun competition we had at one of our sales meetings that I, I won. I like winning. So I I can't believe you won the competitive champion award. Yeah, competitive products. So I mean it was how much do you know product. about competitive products and you know, <laughs> I just just stomped everybody in. Gray still wants a rematch. Trophies too. Do what? I see some <laughs> T ball trophies. Oh yeah, too. these are my girls. So we got Got some don't lie selfies. don't those are yours you got them from your, <laughs> your parents house yeah, 2022 i got it i think That's my mom it. did send me some of my old ones but I, I don't know we got some dance we got soccer you know but but why are they in your office so my office kind of acts it was what the girls trophies yeah well you'd have to meet my wife to understand she doesn't like clutter so she didn't want gotcha. to in the girls room gotcha and, nope. an open bookshelf so there you go in my room perfect yeah. place for it got it yeah. Good. My office also doubles as uh it seems to be a storage room. If I turn this camera around, it would uh <laughs> did you turn your desk around? Like it... that's part of the reason when we started doing these podcasts and stuff is you don't want to see all this clutter behind me. So what it was either it was either like blur my screen like you have like or I am. Yeah. turn yeah. the desk. Yeah. yeah. So you need I'm your good. diploma up there or something. I don't even sides. know where my diploma is. We got Blair's diploma over there. Um, I think my diploma is in that box on the ground, still in the original envelope it came in. I, I don't think I've ever even taken it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expensive piece of paper sitting in that box. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've never been like, why do I need to hang my diploma? Like, I don't know. I always felt like something I should do. To hang it up. We, yeah, we did. So I was uh, a I was a biology major, and I do nothing with biology. Like biology what the yeah. hell made you that's pick surprising that? yeah 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 so I, I thought i wanted to be a doctor and we didn't have a pre-med program so biology or chemistry was the route you took to to go pre-med and got to about my junior year realized i wasn't making it to med school <laughs> and um <laughs> why not and i'm so and i'm so stubborn well I, I realized that i liked uh 
that the social life <laughs> I was much better at the social life than I was at studying in the library on Friday night. You know, there's so, no yeah. there's no yeah. good pickup lines that you can make puns off of chemistry for. That's why he chose biology. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was a uh, that was a tie-in there as well. But I'm so stubborn. I didn't know what else to do. I probably should have done business management or something stupid. But um, I just kept stuck it out with biology and. I think I took organic chem one and two, three times each and finally graduated. So nice. Nice. How long did it take you? Only uh four and a half years. I added a minor. So Still I didn't want to leave. Yeah. I'm pretty I smart. To... I mean, I'm somewhat smart some sometimes. Just not doctor smart, is what you're saying. No, I well that <laughs> no, was more I like, was like Did you just say you can't become a doctor. Like you knew you were gonna become a doctor. That Come was on, more man. like application of myself, you know. No. I just didn't the studying Actually, wasn't my strong suit. I don't know how many like doctors you know personally, but the ones that I do, they're they're not like they're very book smart and they can study and they can be told what to do and they, they mm -hmm. can follow regiment and the, and they can retain information very, very well. However, right. The other half of like living where you just got to have like common knowledge and, and like, I don't want to say street smarts, but like walking around since they don't have it. Like the ones I know, they're just like, Dude. I can't believe you open people's skulls and touch their brains <laughs> because of what just came out of your mouth. I can, I can tell you m numerous occasions where, you know, I was in sales meetings with doctors that had absolutely zero business sense that own their own practice and oh, yeah. they love medicine, but had no idea how to run a business and thought the office manager they hired for 50 grand a year was going to take them to the promised land. And, <laughs> you know, it was... I, I want like all my doctors from now on, I'd be like Hannibal Lecter, but like without the eating people part, it's just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you feel just... like you're in danger around them, but you feel safe <laughs> at the same time. Cause they're like so smart. They're like sharp. I want yeah. all my doctors to be like that. Uh, yeah, because yeah, I I agree, Jamie. I feel like there's so many of them out there. They're like, I don't know, the book told me to do this, so just do this and see what happens. You know, I'm a doctor, <laughs> and you're like, God. Damn. <laughs> I think that's a big thing that's missing from from uh, school. What's the from academics is like everybody should have to learn some sort of business, like go through some sort of business or finance or some sort of program. Because um, I had none. I took I took a couple business classes as electives, but I didn't have to have any anything i like, saw where desantis just uh made some kind of new thing where you know they have to teach him some basic finance or, like, that's yeah it makes sense like <sighs> i think i learned how to balance a checkbook in home ec in eighth grade you know hmm. that was about all i had other than math classes i jeff did you have anything like in in high school or college for that stuff no nothing i had a really out of place like two week period like we had a project it was it was for ap psychology so like college level psychology and uh, they're like we're gonna try something different so we want you to pretend to be somebody uh like pick a profession and pick a mm. place to live and see if you can make the numbers work and i picked like a nurse in dakota because it was like <laughs> well nurses make good money in dakota super cheap <laughs> and it was like and they're like, and, and then here comes the fun factors. And they're like, Brody, you have two kids and like one income. And I was like, oh, okay. And like, <laughs> everybody like kind of failed. I'm not going to lie. Like nobody really got the right numbers. And the teacher was just sitting up there laughing the whole time. Like looking, they're like, good project. Yeah. Yeah. $5,000 a month. Man. Yeah. Two kids. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to yeah, live I mean... in a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I remember vividly, like towards the end of college, being like, "I can make sixty grand a year and like live wherever I want to live and be happy." You know? mm -hmm. I thought that was like I had made it at that point. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> da -da -da -da. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Welcome to the real world. Yep. Here you go. That's why we're all in real estate, you know, to yep. some degree. Yeah. For real. Absolutely. That's a hundred percent it. That's one thing. Cassie and I don't agree on is uh, our kids going to college. And I'm I like, care well, less if they do or they don't, as long as they have, you know, some kind of path. Yeah. I, if they want to go for the experience, sounds great. I may or may not fund it depending on where we're at in life, but I am not setting them up to do, I mean, to be in debt like I was. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, I think they're, I have two girls 
So that's, that makes it a little bit harder, but I think there's definitely a need. I've seen more guys that I know that have just gone into the trades. <laughs> I got two girls too. What are you saying, Jim? Done, done. <laughs> well, where I was going with this, it's a very long winded way of getting back to like, if I had boys, I'd probably tell them to like find a trade they loved and just study some business. And yeah. Cause you're basically, I, I know you want them to have the, the quote unquote experience, but you're basically slowing them down four years to actually getting yeah. on to what they yeah should be and and a lot of times you leave college with stuff you didn't go there with like yeah <laughs> <Just TDs. laughs> whoa where are you going with that <laughs> whoa it's like you guys try to finish each other's sentences but said something completely different <laughs> <laughs> that STDs. Whoa. I think Jamie was talking about a biology degree that didn't really apply, and Jeff went to a different kind of biology. I think they're both valid. I think they're both valid. I mean, none of us are wrong. I mean, yeah. <laughs> There's no wrong answers here, guys. This is a safe space. <laughs> no, I, I really agree with that. Like, I I feel like I mean the school I went to like really was applicable uh to what I did afterwards. Like yeah really helped out and it was great that it was free um i, I can't Fine complain free free yeah service obligation so cr yeah crushing service obligation and emotional damage but um it was you know free for the most part um i gotta find that sound bite <laughs> for emotional damage <laughs> crushing emotional damage um yes yeah, so that's soft millennials but anyways When you leave a review, and I hope you do, don't forget to tell us who you are and leave five stars. That's from Dirty Jobs Micro. Listen, guys, if you're interested in exploring any of the products or services that I use to make my real estate investing career easier, or you want to explore joining us in the W2 Cap Plus community where you can uh, hang out with guys like myself, Brody, Jamie, and Jeff on a routine basis, they're going to be, there's going to be a link somewhere in the description or uh, comments or something like that, wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast. But as promised, if you have any questions whatsoever, or you feel like I can help you in anything we talk about here today on this episode or any of the previous episodes, send me a text. Uh, I was going to say, give me a call, but chances are, if you're not in my phone book, I'm not going to answer. Uh, so send me a text. Let me know what episode you're li listening to and how I can potentially help you. We'll find a time to get on a call. Okay. My cell phone number is 205-249-0248.